Lisa and Gershon, welcome. And yeah, that definitely looks like a new species of jellyfish you got there. <laughs> uh, he's just my furry little buddy. I'm uh, babysitting today. So. <laughs> it's great to have him company. <laughs> but he's very demanding, you know. <laughs> it's great to have him company <laughs> through this interview. Okay, uh, so Lisa, tell us about your, your reaction when you first saw video of this jellyfish. It, look, it was amazing. You know, I so it was sent to me through the Jellyfish app. It's a smartphone app that some colleagues and I um, created. And it came to my email and I took one look at this thing and I went, oh, my God, look at this thing. <laughs> um, it's huge. It's uh, it, it's got to be highly venomous. And right away, I wondered, is it the same as the one that we saw in the 90s? We only saw one specimen in the 90s from the Great Barrier Reef, or is it actually new to science? And so right away, I became fascinated. You know, what is this thing? And, you know, I've since analyzed it very, very thoroughly, frame by frame, gone back, looked at the original specimen from the 90s. And yeah, I'm, I'm confident that it's actually a new species. So I couldn't be more excited or more tickled. And even Tui's excited. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, it's the extraordinary pictures of it. It just looks amazing. Tell us about the size of it, because yeah, viewers won't be aware of the size of it because we've got nothing to compare it with in that vision. Yeah. And, also, and also why you say it it's, would obviously be venomous. Yeah, so as far as its size, it's absolutely huge compared to the one from the 90s. So the one from the 90s was about the size of the palm of your hand. This one's about the size of a soccer ball, so mm. it's considerably more huge. Um, it's also got a lot of uh, differences, both external and internal, that make it different from the one from the Great Barrier Reef, the one from the 90s. Um, you know, it, it, its size, uh, its tentacles, its coloration, it's got internal characters. It's just got so many differences. And so in really comparing this one from Papua New Guinea and the one from the 90s from the Great Barrier Reef, yeah, I've come to the conclusion that, wow, it's new to science. So how exciting is that? And as yeah, far as Lisa, its we'll, do, we'll just bring up some of the pictures now from the original yeah. one found back in the 90s. And so tell us a bit more about how that was found and what work you did on that. Yeah, so that was really interesting. That was found um, after a cyclone. It was found at the Great Barrier Reef. And, you know, it was videotaped, it was photographed, the specimen was captured. Um, you know, so we've got that to refer back to. And um, it was actually uh, classified into the wrong genus or, you know, sort of kind of a family that it sits in. And I came along and into its own genus, and uh, which was the correct place to put it. Um, this one from Papua New Guinea, the new one, is clearly in that same genus but not the same species. They are different in numerous characteristics. And tell so, us about the coloration in this new one. Yeah, it's really spectacular. So um, the one from the Great Barrier Reef in the 90s has spots rather than rings. And this one has rings rather than spots. Hey, 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 come on. And um, so, it, you know, it, it, that wouldn't be enough to describe it as a new species, but it's certainly enough to make me wonder what's going on with that. And I actually suspect that's some kind of warning coloration, which is common in nature. Right. And I think it's basically its way of saying, hey, I am so toxic, I double <laughs> dare you to touch me, you know? <laughs> and wh where to from here for you with this now? Yeah, so we're uh, just finishing up the manuscript to name it and classify it as a new species. And that'll be submitted for peer review, just like any other paper. And, um, and, and then it's official, so it's really exciting. And, you know, the, the people that found it, it's actually a, a man, Dorian Borchards, who runs um, a scuba diving business in Papua New Guinea, and he was out diving and photographing with a customer at, for business. And they saw this, they saw six of them, believe it or not. And, you know, it was like, oh my God, look at that thing. And there were these huge things swimming towards them. And they were like, oh God, 
so they got brilliant footage of it and you know how lucky are we that we've got this so well documented and who gets to choose the new name if it is a new species Oh, uh, look, definitely Dorian. It's his baby. It's his baby. <laughs> it sounds like a cool name <laughs> as well. And so have you mentioned they saw six of them on that trip. Have they, I think that was back in December. Do you know if they've seen yeah. them again? No, that's what's so interesting. So Dorian's been working there for more than 20 years and you know, dives all the time, obviously, and he's never seen it before. And as far as we know, nobody else has ever seen it either. Um, so, you know, <laughs> I, okay, look, I just, I'm human. I totally want to go there and explore around, see if I can find more of these things. I mean, I reckon people are going to be flocking to this place to see if they can find it because it's just so spectacular. Yeah, have you got so. your scuba ticket? I do, I do. <laughs> it's just that I'm going to have to leave this little dude behind. If I go <laughs> it looks and like you're going to have trouble, trouble doing <laughs> that. Okay, uh, Lisa and Gershwin, it's been so cool having a chat to you and Tui. Love your passion for what you do and uh, thanks for talking to us this morning. My pleasure. Catch up. <laughs> Take care.